In this video, I'm going to check out yet another RTX 4070 Ti, and here I have the Gaming Pro OC from Palette. Now, the last Palette card I reviewed was an extremely RGB heavy and only slightly over the top Game Rock RTX 3090, but this time around, I have their more mid range model, the Gaming Pro OC. So, let's see what Palette did here in terms of design, features, and performance, and let's see how it compares to four other 4070 Ti cards when it's comes to thermals, noise, and power consumption. Let's begin. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime TX power supplies. These fully modular, high-quality power supplies are extremely efficient, they are very quiet due to their new hybrid fan control that stops the fans completely under 40% load, they offer a variety of connections for any kind of systems you have in mind, and you even get the new 12 volt high power connection you need for the brand new RTX 4090 graphics cards from Nvidia. They range from 650 watts all the way up to 1600 watts for the biggest enthusiasts out there, and as a nice bonus, you get a cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Even though it should only be slightly over MSRP, the Palette Gaming Pro is still a pretty big GPU. It is about 33 centimeters long and about three slots thick, so it's not as extreme as some 4080s and 4090s, but it is still worth checking if it will fit in your case. When it comes to design, there is just a lot going on here. The plastic shroud is mostly black with some silver metal elements, and the metal backplate is mostly silver with some black details and a model name. The sides have a mix of both colors and a few RGB details, so I would say it is not the most neutral design, and I personally think it's a bit more busy than it needed to be. But black and silver color scheme is pretty common with most motherboards, so it should still be pretty easy to match it up with other hardware. The build quality is all right. Uh, it is not as solid as the Tough model, for example, that has an all metal shroud, but it feels pretty similar to the Gigabyte Gaming OC. And while it's not as extravagant as the GameRock 3090, it still has a lot of RGB, uh, primarily on the front, where it looks like it has some RGB tiger claw action going on. And I personally think it is a bit too much and that it would have looked way better if they went with a less is more approach, but this is just my personal preference and I'm sure that others might like this design a bit more. Anyway, since Palette doesn't make their own software, the RGB can be controlled using the regular addressable RGB header instead, which does make it easier to integrate it into the RGB ecosystem of your motherboard or some third-party controller. You will have to manage this extra cable, but if you just run it by your GPU power cable, it will be completely fine. In terms of features, there is not that much to talk about. Uh, they didn't include a dual BIOS option, which a 4070 Ti realistically shouldn't need, and you get the usual three display ports and one HDMI 2.1 port, which is the default 4070 Ti layout. So far, only the ASUS cards offer an extra HDMI port. Now, I wouldn't mind if they added the GPU holder in the future to prevent the GPU from sagging, as this is a 1.5 kilo GPU and some extra support would be nice to have. For power, this card uses the same 16-pin 12-volt high power connector, and it includes an adapter to use two 8-pin cables from your power supply instead, which is less bulky than the previous adapters, but still, I do recommend grabbing a long native cable, which will look much better overall. Before I dive into the performance of this card, uh, let's do a quick recap of the 4070 Ti chip itself and how it compares to the 3080, 4080, and the 7900 XT from AMD. Now, compared to the RTX 3080, the 4070 Ti is a significant upgrade. It is 18 to 19% faster on all three resolutions, which also puts it nicely ahead of the 3070 Ti and pretty much anything last gen. But compared to the 4080 from this generation, the 4080 is about 18% faster on 1440p and about 24% faster on 4K resolution, which is quite a significant gap, and it means that the 4070 Ti will only make sense if the price doesn't even come close to the 4080 MSRP. Compared to the RX 7900 XT, the XT ended up about 11% faster on 1440p and 15% faster on 4K 
resolution. But this is raw performance and without adding other factors that might be important to some people. Uh, things like DLSS, ray tracing, encoders and so on. AMD also had a bit of a shaky launch, which I covered in one of my previous videos. So if you want to check it out, I will leave a link in the description of this video. So on its own, the RTX 4070 Ti does perform objectively fine with a nice high refresh rate Quad HD experience and an okay 4K experience, especially in titles that support upscaling. But again, it is important to remember that the RTX 4080 and the 7900 XTX are just much faster here. But let's see how Palette compares to other cards I've tested so far. So the Gaming Pro OC only has one single BIOS, so you will only see one result for this card, while all the others will have their faster BIOS shown in a lighter shade and the silent profile shown in a darker shade. And when it comes to clock speeds, the palette was showing the highest average clock speed out of the box, even though the differences are very small, with the slowest stuff model being about 3% behind. The memory isn't overclocked, which goes for all other cards as well, but you can manually overclock it if you prefer to do so. And even though it has slightly higher boost clocks, the FPS differences in game are very small, and all of these cards perform extremely similar when it comes to gaming. In God of War, the palette is technically the fastest card, but with a lead of less than 2%, this is not something you will really notice while gaming. In Doom Eternal, we see the same thing. A few frames up and down between the fastest and the slowest card are barely worth talking about. And the same can be said for Spider-Man Remastered. The palette is technically on the top of the graph, but the difference between the palette and other cards are between 1-2%, to which is once again close to irrelevant. Now looking at the power consumption, these marginally higher clocks do lead to marginally higher power use, but here too the difference is just too small that it's very difficult to draw hard conclusions. When gaming, the total system power consumption will generally be between 400 to 450 watts, uh, depending on the situation in your CPU. So with a mid-range CPU, you're not going to have any issues if you currently own a good quality 550 watt power supply. Though, if you're buying a new one, I would recommend getting a 650 one instead. And if you're going to pair it with a higher-end CPU, like a 13900K for example, I would consider going up a bit and getting a 750 watt power supply instead. But let's look at thermals and noise. Palette starts off really well here, uh, 37.8 decibels at a 50 centimeter distance on an open test bench is an excellent result. It is barely audible and it is in line with the bigger MSI in its faster profile and a tough gaming card in its quiet profile. And there was no coil whine on this sample at any point during my testing. The temperature results almost look like the noise graph reversed, uh, but once again the differences are here very small. If I exclude the two super loud gigabyte profiles, the core temperatures of all of these cards are so similar that it really doesn't seem to matter which one you will choose. And the same goes for the hotspot temps. The memory temperatures on the other hand show slightly larger differences, but even here the only thing you want to see is that the memory is properly cooled and not close to overheating. And the uh, palette doesn't have the best result of them all, but it is still doing completely fine. So in summary, the Gaming Pro OC runs very quiet while still showing great temperatures, and I think this is a really sensible tuning. I usually end up preferring the silent profile for many GPUs that offer that option, but here I actually don't miss it at all. And if that helps to keep the cost down, even better. Now we just need to wait and see what the prices will be like. Uh, as I said in my previous videos, I am filming this a few days before the launch and Nvidia still hasn't shared their MSRP and the partners still didn't share their prices. But for any 4070 Ti to make sense, the MSRP will have to be far away from the 4080 MSRP and then it is going to be up to Pallet to make sure that their cards are priced competitively compared to others. I am very happy to see another palette card after a long while because they haven't been that common here in Europe, but seeing how well this card holds up compared to some of the bigger brands, I really do hope that that will change. 
Anyways, this is all I have for today. Let me know in the comments down below what do you think about the 4070 Ti chip and about this palette model. And while you are there, make sure you click that subscribe button to never miss any of my future uploads. Bye guys and see you in the next one.